So why are failures so important? Why is it important to embrace failure? Well, coming here today, I was looking up um, failure in Wikipedia, asking myself, so what is exactly, what is failure? Failure is a state or condition of not meeting. You see, the problem with these things is that people think that success and failure are two opposite things. But it's not, because it's so close to each other. Let's say, for example, if I would take a, um, like, um, a ball and throw it into a bucket. If I would fail 99 times, I would be a failure. But once I make it, it becomes a success. So it's all based on so many people that have so many things that could have been success, but they gave up before. Because they were afraid, because people told them the whole time, it's not possible. You cannot do this, you cannot do that. Well, the biggest mistake we can do in life is not daring to do mistakes. Because every time we do something extraordinary in life, we change our patterns, for example, we are part of evolution. We're part of change, we're part of the maybe upcoming failures, but also upcoming success. So, so what is exploration? I've been doing this now for, for 20 years. Well, exploration is to dare, is to step outside your comfort zone. To explore is to also change your pattern, to dare to do something, to dare to fail. All of the explorers that have been going around the world have had one thing in common, they've all failed. And all of the leaders have all failed one time or another, because it's based on failure, it's based on taking risks. When I was a kid, I had the lowest grade in gymnastics. Anybody recognize this wooden horse? This was my comfort zone. I was hiding behind this wooden horse because I was so bad in the football team that it was better to take the lowest grade in gymnastics than actually being on the other side and showing my failure to my, to my friends in school, saying that I cannot play football. But I was a little bit tired of these questions the whole time, like, can I do this, can I do that? So I wanted to try and do something that everybody would say would be impossible for me. So I was sitting one time, sitting and watching television, and saw somebody playing the piano, and I asked my mother, who's that? Well, his name is Elton John, he plays the piano. Well, I want to learn to play like Elton John. Well, then three things. Motivation, practicing, and then just be motivated. And you have to dare to fail. So, three years later, I became a concert pianist, I became a piano player, and I played all over France, and I played all over Sweden, and I played the piano. Somebody paid me to play the piano, which was pretty interesting for me, because I thought it would be impossible. But people told me that it might be possible if I believed it myself. So this became an eye-opener for me. I started to understand that maybe I can do other things in life. Maybe I can change as well. I realized at this point that the difficult thing in life is not to reach your goals, it's to find out what your goals are. Because once you focus 100% on something, you can actually reach your goals. But the problem today, especially, is that you have so many things to focus on. So I took away everything I had in life and focused on one thing, to play the piano. Now I was sitting at the Grand Hotel playing the piano in Stockholm, and my friend said, well, you happen to have an ear for music, but you can't just put this in a different context. I said, I can do whatever I want to with motivation and focusing and as long as I dare to fail. Well, let's just say, like gymnastics, you were the worst in the football team, you can't do something physical. So we made a bet, I would quit my job at the Grand Hotel, I would buy a bicycle, and I would bike to the Sahara. Um, that was kind of a, like, a problem, because I had no idea what I was doing at that time. I just jumped on the bike, I threw up in Södertälje, a place not too far from here. Um, and then I just moved on, because I was so tired, I wanted to give up every day. Would I give up? Never. Did I think about it? Every day. They were not going to laugh at me one more time. After that, I came home again, and I said, this is fun. Embracing failures and see how much you can push your limits and then what you can do with your life. So I started to do climbing, and I went to Mount McKinley in Alaska. But to do that, you have to climb. I knew that. So I called up the, like, the climbing association, and I asked them for 10 names for 10 of the best climbers. And I called them up with one single question. What mistakes have you done? Not what do you recommend, what do you suggest, because that I can read about in books. What are your biggest mistakes that you've done? And that became my biggest knowledge up on the mountain, because I knew what not to do. I did not exactly know what to do, but I knew, no, but, but I knew what not to do. So that became my greatest knowledge. I understood that I have to learn from other people's mistakes. That is the best way of doing my studies for my next adventure. 
So it's better to fail than to never attempt. Because for me, I knew that failure was a part of my life. Failure was an everyday problem to me. Now it started to become more and more of like success became a part of my life. Because everything that I put up, I started to do because I believed that I could do it. So why are we so afraid? I think it's a social aspect a lot. I think that we are afraid of showing our friends, telling our dreams. We're afraid of failure because what other people might say to us. But we have to understand that failure is a process just to succeeding. If you fail enough time, you will succeed at the end. So when I was 15 years old, I, I was doing Aikido which is kind of the philosophy of failure. It's interesting because my teacher, he told me that every time you attack me, I take you down on the floor. And why is that? And you get more and more angry every time. You do more and more failures. So instead of thinking about how to attack me, think about instead, what are you doing wrong? What are your failures? So I started to become better and better by believing instead of focusing on my failures, instead of focusing what I was going to do to take him down. So it's a lot of things that, are, that, that is actually based on embracing failures. So exploration is not a geographical journey. It's an inner discovery of our own true potentials. Every time we do an exploration, it can be geographical, it can be inner journey, but we move forward, we learn. So when I was, uh, I climbed the seven summits, highest point on all the seven continents, and one of those mountains are Aconcagua in South America. And Aconcagua was an interesting mountain because it's not too difficult, it's 7,000 meters, it's not so technical, but it's very windy, it's very cold. A little bit from the, like, 20, 30 meters from the summit, we turn around, very irritating, coming down again, and a journalist is, is coming up with a microphone, so you have failed, how does it feel? Uh, no, I haven't failed. Yeah, you turned around just before the summit. We were following your, your blog. Yeah, but I haven't failed. I just postponed the success until next year. <laughs> what do you mean by that? You have failed. It's pretty obvious. You didn't reach the summit. That's correct. So you have failed. No. I'm just in the process of succeeding because next year I will come back again and I will do this summit. So instead of focusing on, for example, now, that I failed, I memorized every step along the way, down from the mountain, how can I take this knowledge and learn, so next year when I'm coming back, so as, as long as I keep on trying, you can never say that I fail. As long as I never ever give up, you can say, never say that I, that I did a mistake, that I failed, that I didn't make it, because I'm in the process of succeeding. So, I went back the next year, and I did a summit again, and I made it, and I came back again, then I made a summit. So, failure is knowledge. Um, every time we do something, it's knowledge. If you just take evolution, we think that evolution is 4.5 billion years of succeeding. Well, it's actually the opposite. It's 4.5 billion years of failures. But we learn from the failures, we move, we adapt. Every time we do a failure, we learn, oops, that was wrong, we take another way, we go back again, we learn, we improve. So it's based on failures, it's based on people daring to do mistakes. It's based on people and, and, and animals and peoples and cultures, everything, daring to do mistakes and doing other things that you were ex expected to do. So by taking this idea into consideration, the history of failures is actually pretty interesting. If you just take, for example, the Tower of Pisa, 177 years ago they built this tower, it was a huge failure, but, but now it's one of the world's most iconic buildings. So instead of saying this was a failure, they're very proud of it. I mean, we have a sh ship in, in Sweden called the Vasa. So we built this one. It's pretty funny because this American guy came up to me. Are you for real? So you build this huge ship. You're so proud of it. You go out 20 meters. It sinks. And instead of like, you know, shh, don't talk about it, you build a museum out of it. <laughs> Look at our failures. Very interesting. Embracing failure. So... And we're not even going to talk about Cristobal Colon that was going to India, ending up in America instead. Um, talking about, like, you know, you know reaching a different des des destination. Um, another funny story is actually uh, Amundsen was, um, was going to go to the North Pole, actually. And he put together his team, a ship, everything. It was a huge project at that time. So he put together this huge team, you know, and he, then he finds out that Cook and Peary, two other persons, they are actually also, um, uh, they are saying that they have both reached um, um, 
the North Pole. So he understands that I cannot really go to the North Pole because it's al already been discovered. What am I going to do now? I have the book, uh, I, have, I'm, I have the ship, I have the, I have the crew, I have everything in order, but I cannot go to the North Pole because it's already been discovered. So he goes on the boat, on the ship, and most of the people on board, they had no idea. He was instead going to the South Pole, which is a little bit longer journey. It's on the other side of, of like the planet. So it was like two to three, five years longer. Another thing that was interesting, it was, ironically, uh, Fleming at that time, he was searching for a wonder drug that could um, cure diseases. So instead, he threw it away because he never, he never found out how to actually do this. So instead, he found out that um, pe like penicillin would like, you know, be an antibiotic. So instead of like, you know, failing, he found out something that was really interesting. Um, I have in my coming book, I have a book coming out now this spring called Mistakes and Other Good Decisions which is based on my 20 biggest mistakes in my life. And that is interesting because I have one chapter called The Wall Philosophy. The Wall Philosophy is built on a very interesting question. It's built on the question, can I walk through brick wall? Well, the obvious answer might be, no, it's made of brick. You cannot walk through brick wall. Well, my answer would be, I don't know how to do it. But just because I don't know how to do it doesn't mean that it's impossible. If I would show an iPhone in the 1300s, they would probably burn me alive. If I would show electricity in the Stone Age, they would think that I'm God. So meaning that maybe in the future we can walk through brick wall. Maybe in one million years we can go up in atoms and on the other side back together again. Maybe we can never do that. But that's not the point. The, in the interesting part is that I don't know if it will be possible. Meaning that I can never say that it's impossible. So when I was kayaking to Africa, people said, well, that is impossible. You cannot go from Nybroviken here down in Stockholm and go all the way down to Africa with a kayak. Why not? It's impossible. I'm so sorry. I had no idea. Why is it impossible? No, because nobody's ever done it before. That's interesting. So just because nobody's ever done it before, does that mean it's impossible? So in order to succeed, your desire for success should be greater than your fear of failure. You must dare to fail. And every time, if I do, for example, if I climb Mount Everest, or if I kite surf over Greenland, or if I go to the North Pole, to the South Pole, all these things are based on you have to dare. But people are so afraid of doing these things. For example, the, the, it's a big difference between dream and goal, for example. A goal is something you can reach. A goal is something you know you can reach. A dream, on the other hand, is afraid of failure, because you, you don't talk about the dream so much because you're afraid of what your friends would tell you. You're also afraid of what your own state of mind will tell you, that is this really possible? I know I can reach my goal, but that dream is so far away. So instead of going for those dreams, instead, I would say date the dream, because people don't go for the dreams, people go for the small goals that they know they can reach, instead of believing themselves, saying that it can be possible. So the question is not to avoid problems. The question is to, to learn how to solve them. We will always do mistakes. We just have to learn from mistakes and embrace them and take that, take that as knowledge. Not trying to avoid them, say that, oh, I'm so afraid of mistakes, I will never do mistakes. One guy at one lecture once, he raised his hand and said, listen, I don't believe this. You know, I never do mistakes. Then I said, well, then you never push your limits. Because by pushing your limits, you will know where your limits are. You see, the only way to truly know where your, um, your, where your failures are is actually to push your limits and see, like, you know, to go to, the, go to the failures. Because nobody in here has ever not done a failure. It's just a question of how do you deal with them. We're becoming lazy now. We're becoming comfortable in evolution. And the reason for that is everything is so close by, everything is so comfortable, everything is so easy, meaning that we don't have to really go for the dream. The goals are so close by. But instead of doing that, why not instead change evolution for the moment? Why not embrace failure more and take that in consideration, saying that let's dare more, let's take more risk. I call this revolution. Revolution is based on we have to dare more, we have to take more, um, you know, Take failure and take that as a part of life, because we all need to do mistakes to be able to find out where our limits are to go into the success. Um, obstacles are just opportunities in disguise. Every time we have an obstacle, we move forward, we learn from the obstacles. So when I look back at my wooden horse, for example, like, you know, 
30 years later, 20 years of, of exploration all over the world, I understand most that other people around me can do so much more than I thought they could. In the beginning, I didn't think that I could actually do anything at all. But then when I started to understand how much I can do with my mind and with my motivation and focusing, I started to look at people, instead of failures, I look at people as heroes. I look at people saying that so many people in here can do so much things instead of saying like, who are you and you cannot do any, any, anything at all. So the tip of the iceberg started to become a whole iceberg. It started to become um, the whole iceberg, the whole body of the iceberg as a, a true potential. So looking back in time, it's so interesting how, for example, these things change your life because it is changed the whole time. And going back to the wooden horse, so much things has changed. I know that it, it's worth to go outside my comfort zone. It's worth also to struggle. It is blood, sweat and tears, but it's worth it. It's worth the struggle and it's worth taking the risk. I work with a lot of organizations. 50% of my time goes to charity. So um, I work as ambassador for an organization called Min Stora Dag. It's like a Make-A-Wish Foundation. And we brought up 17 kids with different diseases, among them cancer. And I brought them up to the summit of, of, of Kebnekaise, which is the highest mountain in Sweden, for example. And it was interesting how these kids, one little kid, he, he started to cry. And I, I was like, are you hurt? No. Are you afraid? No. I'm proud. Because my friends said this, this would be impossible. And here I am going up to the summit. So by embracing failure, you know, you reach so much more in your life if you, if you just dare. And change also, you know, if you focus on results, you will never change. But if you focus on change, you will get results. If you focus on change, which is failure, to actually take your mind and just go somewhere else. Because everything is possible. The impossible just takes a little bit more time. Thank you very much.